today, the Biden administration cuts back allocation of antibody treatments in red states. L.A. County is going to roll out a new vaccine mandate. And Joe Biden also backs General Milley amid the uproar over the alleged China calls. We have got a jam packed show today and it all starts right now. Hey, welcome to the news and why it matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez and it is Thursday. I am back first of all, but more importantly, we have Stu Bergier, host of Stu Does America. And I think you're much more important than me, Sarah. Do you? Yes, so I think you're more important that you're back. I feel like you're mm. just saying that because of, I'm... In fact, I'm just gonna go home right now. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> you know what, I'm all set. I wanna make sure the focus is on you. Wait, back. no, mm. I need you oh, for the show. Okay. I, I, what are these topics again? I haven't really... Uh... <laughs> also joined by Pat Gray. Obviously, Stu doesn't wanna be here, but I, on the other hand, I Do. cherish this opportunity. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, wow. He just always sounds so sincere when he says uh, that. And I, yeah. and I am. Yeah. Well, I also am really excited to be here. Um, could not feel better after having like five days at Universal Studios in Florida with two children. Why do, why do people <laughs> have children? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And you had already learned the lesson too with a, with a child earlier, and then yeah. you did it again. I did it it's again. It's really your fault. It's kind of weird how people keep doing that. Mm -hmm. I think something in your brain you just black out, and you're like, "This seems like a good idea," and then you do it mm -hmm. again, and you're like, "Oh, I forget." Not. Mm -hmm. We forgot. Pretty soon you've got 16. Like yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah. Like you. It's yeah. Like, wow. And you've been punished <laughs> with a baby 16 <laughs> times. 16 and times. Now <laughs> you twice or whatever. So I mean, we're 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 about we're about at 100 total yes. as a table. So I yeah vacation not so much but I am back for my trip and I'm sad I missed a lot. It seems like every time oh, yeah. I go out of town, at least mm. these days, you leave for like two days and you miss so much that's going on in the news cycle. Uh, but today. The Biden administration is tightening its grip on the distribution of the coronavirus uh, monoclonal antibody treatments to several states after uh, a bunch of, I mean, I just, we could call it a coincidence, right? Mm -hmm. A coincidence mm -hmm. that it's a bunch of red states, Florida, Texas, Alabama, um, these are all, they, you would call them red states, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. States in the South, they are getting hit very hard uh, with COVID right now. And the Biden administration is now cutting back how much Regeneron, how much monoclonal antibody treatments they send to these states. Now, I just want to just just for reference, I would like to flash back just a second. This was not that long ago. September 9th. What was that last week? September 9th, when Joe Biden gave his speech, he said he was going to increase the average pace of shipment across the country of these antibody treatments. He said it himself right here. Watch. Tonight, I'm announcing we will increase the average pace of shipment across the country of free monoclonal antibody treatments by another 50 percent. Now, I, I mean, mm. other than like the slurring at the beginning, that seemed pretty like across the country, Sarah, mm. across the mm -hmm. country. Right. So uh, federal health officials plan to allocate specific amounts to each state under a new approach in an effort to more evenly distribute the 150,000 doses that the government makes available each week. The approach is likely to cut into shipments to GOP led states in the southeast that have made the pricey antibody drug a central part of their pandemic strategy while simultaneously spurning mask mandates and other restrictions. So I guess it's just a coincidence that these places, that it's been working in these places, all of a sudden they are not going to have as much access to it. Now I will also throw in here, because I think this is something that's been overlooked, HHS, uh, whenever they, they put out this memo, now it was September 3rd, so before Biden's speech, they did say that they wanted to, it says uh, HHS is immediately implementing the following changes to help promote optimal and equitable use mm. of the available supply of monoclonal antibodies. So it, you, you see that term equitable in there and you know everything must be above board. You know, what a, what a terrible coincidence that these red states who are the mm -hmm. ones dealing with the worst outbreaks would just not be able to get as much access as these other states. I, I assume it's probably something to do with, uh, probably Ibram Kendi uh, of, you know, was able to tell us which states were equitable to right. receive this, uh, these treatments. 
Um, you know, this, it's funny because he did this speech, and it was obviously a terrible speech that we all uh, ripped pretty harshly. This was the one good part of it, though, right? right? Like, yes, the, like mm. this is a really promising treatment. It's done a, a lot of things, good things for a lot of people. Um, it is, uh, it's worked really well. Uh, President Trump took it famously, and Greg Abbott took it here in Texas when he had COVID. Uh, lots of people are taking it, and it's doing really good things. And you'd think the 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 top target for its use would be the uh, states that are having the biggest outbreaks and maybe don't have uh, as high a per percentage of vaccines. You keep complaining about that. Well, what can we do about it? You can harangue them. You can uh, you can harass people. You can tell people that they need to do it and they really should do it and they're evil if they don't do it. Or you could try to use some of the treatments and tools we have at our disposal to limit the impact of what you see as a bad decision. Mm -hmm. What does the president do? Of course, he decides that he'd rather have the talking point instead of having people live. That is exactly what he's doing, and he continually keeps doing it. It's a pattern and a real thing he's doing over and over again. Okay, so that, that was going to be my question is, uh, I was going to ask either of you to convince me that this is not the administration, like, literally saying we're fine with killing people. Uh, can, yeah. anyone, can anyone convince me that that's not true? I mean, I, I, can't, I cannot see any other way to read this if the availability is there, and they mm -hmm. have the ability to ship them out, and they choose not to knowing that these states are overwhelmed with the cases and knowing that it's an effective treatment, what is that other than giving people a death sentence to prove a political point and force people to get another treatment that they don't want to get? Anyone? No, I, I, I really don't know. I mean, you got me. it's incredible. I, I bet you if you dug into how that policy came up, First of all, there would be real politics, as we're uh, basically alleging here. Like they don't want to give it to red states. It's like you know, mm -hmm. I mean, we've had exa we've seen examples of this uh, before. Um, but I think in addition, you might have some people in the administration who are saying, well, uh, you know, the lowest vaccination rates in the country are among uh, black and Hispanic populations, and we want to ship them to urban centers, uh, maybe in in blue states. I mean, maybe there's some of that, but that's terrible i mean I, I, that is a a terrible way to, to and they're not asking for it right they, like, right, exactly. they don't need right. the availability exactly right now. they have they, that's not where they need it right? right it should be you know uh uh governor uh desantis yeah. um came up with a policy uh relatively recently to basically have strike forces of these monoclonal an antibodies to take them to high infection areas so they can do the most good that is humanly possible that's a really good policy and it seemed like honestly Biden was sort of, you know, kind of like looking over his shoulder and like writing down and like cheating and like taking a bit of this policy, at least as he announced it. It would make sense to target the areas that have the biggest outbreaks. If it's the north, that's great. Like that's where they should go. It shouldn't be the south just because we want our equal amount. It should go to where the outbreaks are because this is a, a treatment that happens after people already have the virus. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense wherever when you have those little, you know, the New York Times makes their fancy little maps and there's the dark red in those areas. Wherever that dark red is, that's where most of them should go. Instead, what we're getting here seems like the type of thing that um, uh, we see from Democratic uh, operations all the time, which is revenge. It's proving this point. It's trying to, mm -hmm. they'd rather have that talking point than these people mm -hmm. survive. Mm -hmm. And that is just like, it, it is the, it's a terrible instinct. But it goes back to, um, you know, basically the, the, uh, the delivery system for democratic policy in a way we can all understand was Jimmy Kimmel a couple of weeks ago when he got on there and said, hey, if you don't get the vaccine, you should die. Mm -hmm. I want you to die. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Wheezy. Mm -hmm. You know, that is the attitude of this administration. And they don't care about people in red states who say they don't want, they don't want the vaccine or they don't want to wear masks. They don't care. And because they don't care, they're going to target people they do care about, mm -hmm. their voters. Pat, uh, I, I heard from the left during the Trump administration, I kept hearing, they kept saying, for Donald Trump, the cruelty is the point. <laughs> and here I'm like, hmm, really? I feel like that was a little bit of projection here. Yeah, <laughs> and then they wonder why people are taking ivermectin. Yeah. I mean, if you, can't, if you can't get a specialized treatment that seems to work for a lot of people, and I mean, there's so much anecdotal evidence, if not, and there are actual studies that mm -hmm. people have done that, uh, with ivermectin that it has saved people's lives. Um, but if you dare take that and that's working for people, sorry, we've got to shame you into not taking it because it's for horses. It's to deworm horses. 
Um, it was the same thing with uh, hydroxychloroquine, which mm -hmm. helped a lot of people. I mean, y you probably know people who took hydroxychloroquine and got better. Mm -hmm. Was it something else? I, I don't know, but it worked. And now here's a treatment that even Fauci thinks is a good treatment. And now they want to they want to give us less of it. And well, and not that we are obviously we're not trying to give medical advice here, but um, I am. I'm a doctor. Are you? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never knew that about yeah, you. Yeah, Don't look too closely. Into that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, when you look at let's just say the left's uh, continual talking point, which is the you know, the the decision should be left up to the patient and the doctor. Yet we see with all of these medications that seem to be promising, some doctors are saying, mm -hmm. hey, I think this is working for me. Now, all of a sudden, we can't leave it up to the patient and their doctor. Right. Uh, we have to have the pharmacies shut it down. We have to have the government ask for lists of, you know, who's doing what, which doctors are prescribing what treatments. Like, I, it's just mm -hmm. interesting how all of a sudden they don't want that to be between the patient and their it doctor. It is interesting, isn't it? It's, I, I, the the doctor-patient uh, privacy, that important yeah, sacred relationship, important. actually only applies to abortion. You should know yeah. that. Oh, that's so the does only, my body by choice. Yes, my body <laughs> <That> only <laughs> applies, applies to abortion. To abortion. Huh. Um, so just so you know, and for future reference, uh, it's very important. Um, it's, it's interesting because like, we have three basic buckets of ways to fight COVID, right? We have mitigation strategies. That would be masks and social distancing. We have a vaccine element, uh, you know, or, uh, or prophylaxis, right? There's, there's, uh, there's other medications that fit into that. But like, you know, we'll group that generally as the vaccine. And then you have treatment. You have a post, uh, we, you get COVID, and then you have treatments. For some reason, they don't want to really focus on that last bucket. Mm -hmm. Now, and they want to focus way too much on the first bucket. Mm -hmm. I want the first bucket dead. I don't want any more mitigation. The whole point of this is to get past the mitigation state. Right. And I think like we, when you look at what we have at our, at our, um, at our, in our arsenal right now, I mean, I, you know, look, the vaccines, I think, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pro vaccine. I think that's a good part of this, of this battle. It's not the whole battle though, right? There are other things we can do as well for people who don't want to get vaccines. There there are really important treatments. The steroid mm -hmm. treatment it, it, for people who are in serious danger has shown incredible uh, results, and it is widely used for people who are in the hospital and get close. You know, you don't want to get that close. Obviously, you'd like to get it before that. Um, you know, we, we mentioned a couple of medications that have shown some positive uh, results mm -hmm. for some people. Uh, you know, re you can go to remdesivir, you could go to monoclonal anti antibodies. Fluvoxamine, it seems like it has some real promise, and that's just kind of uh, emerging. There are a bunch of things here, and like, it doesn't mean that all of those things are right for everyone. And if you're comfortable taking the vaccine, I think it's a, it's a smart step. Or if your doctor says uh, you should take it. But like once the person is sick, it is a Let horror show right. to not allow them to try to tr yeah, look like absolutely. You go on any liberal social media site right now or, uh, you know, a social media feed. You will see post after post after post of a of people who posted bad things about the vaccine, posted bad things. They don't like masks. They don't want to do the social mm -hmm. distancing. It's a hoax, whatever. And then pictures of those people in the hospital. Yeah. The left, it's like porn they love it. Yeah. for them. Oh, yeah. And it's oh, yeah. all oh, yeah. And they wish death on them. Yeah, they yes. wish. And they, ex they, they are excited about watching it happen. Yeah. Or, I mean, that's just a monstrosity of, of, of a behavior. And like, we should be looking at this and say, look, you know, look, there are certain situations where some of those mitigation uh, aspects can be really smart and sensible. You know, I mean, like if you're in a high outbreak area, you're in a you're a person who is particularly vulnerable to it. You know, an indoor packed activity might be something you want to avoid still to this day, like as mm -hmm. much as I hate it. Um, but all these other things are part of a big arsenal that we can all mm -hmm. use. We don't want to just use our Air Force or just use our Navy or just use our Marines. Right. Like we want to use them all to win a war. This is what we're in right now. And there's no reason we can't utilize that. For some reason, like there's this like religious adherence to mitigation, really the number one mm -hmm. strategy. And then at some level vaccination, because we've seen even with vaccination, they want you to do the mitigation right. strategies. Right. Like they don't even see that. Mm -hmm. um, they, but th that treatment part is like, it's almost like the dark underbelly of this. And there's real promise there. There's no reason we can't come up with, you know, with with these things sort of developing, you know, they're, they're showing some of these studies are really showing some promise. Let's throw it, let's throw everything at it. You know, let's let's really go for this. Especially for some reason, if something isn't down. working. You're on REM severe right. it's not working you're getting worse yeah right why wouldn't why would you? you why, why wouldn't would you, you try yeah. anything and everything right
Right, or at least be able sense. to discuss it with your doctor knowing yeah. that you can make that decision yep. uh, for yourself. All right, we've got more to come, including uh, Arizona has filed the first lawsuit over the Biden vaccine mandates. We'll get to that after the break. First, I want to thank our sponsor, Home Title Lock. So, uh, you know, if you own a home, you probably you build up all of this equity in your home. Maybe it's $50,000, $100,000, whatever the case may be. Uh, what you don't realize is that the more equity you have, the greater chance that foreign and domestic criminals can come after you using home title theft, which is one of the fastest growing crimes in America. Uh, home Title Lock is America's leader in home title protection. They are alerting homeowners they could be a victim and not know it. In fact, these two guys right here actually had, uh, what, the, what are they, retired FBI agents yeah. who work for Home Title Lock and they came in and like stole your homes. That was mm -hmm. pretty terrifying. They just, because we were supposed to have a call with them and they were going to explain how easy <laughs> this was to do and like here's an example of how you do it. And they just sent me the letter without but before I knew the call was happening. So I just got a letter and it was just like a, a title of my home with someone else's name at the top of it. I was like, what is going on? I'm being scammed. Uh, they were just showing us as an example that it could be done very easily. And, you know, it can be. Uh, that's why you need to really be protected before it happens. Yes. Yeah. So you want to get on this. All right. This is your most valuable asset. Register your address to see if you are already a victim. You will receive a complete title history of your home. That is a hundred dollar value for free. If you go to home title lock dot com. All right. Home HomeTitleLock.com. The state of Arizona has sued the federal government over uh, Biden's sweeping order to mandate vaccinations for federal employees, contractors, uh, and of course, the big kicker that um, I know we were all kind of alluding to earlier in the, the previous segment that, uh, you know, it's basically a federal vaccine mandate. When you're telling mm -hmm. the businesses they have to enforce this particular rule, uh, that that's kind of a federal mandate. But uh, the Arizona says, would you just? No, I. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. No, I think it's definitely a. Mr. Pro, I like to get Mr. Pro vaccines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, Tape. like, it's, I, I, I'm interested to hear what their case is here, but it's, it, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting legal battle over this. So the attorney general uh, said the federal government cannot force people to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The Biden administration is once again flouting our laws and precedents to push their radical agenda. There can be no serious or scientific discussion about containing the spread of COVID-19 that doesn't begin at our southern border. They say that the vaccine mandate violates the Equal Protection Clause by favoring my Migrants that have crossed into the country illegally mm. over legal U.S. citizens uh, <laughs> since they allow the migrants to decline the vaccine, which That's Jen great. Psaki actually admitted yeah. uh, what was mm -hmm. it at the at the beginning of this week she said they asked her and she said that's correct yeah and then wouldn't give any yeah. additional information same with the Afghan uh, ref mm -hmm. refugees that refugees. wind up here they're not going to be forced either. right who by the way uh, refugees do take ivermectin before they they have right every them. single one of them yes. must. Yes. Right. It's actually yes. required. Take ivermectin um, before Why they... are they giving them horse dewormer? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> How dare the federal government do that? It's because they're brown, isn't it? Yeah. Joe Biden. <laughs> it's interesting, too. Here's the people that we have absolute authority to force them to take vaccines if we want. Yes. Yeah. Right? They, I, yeah, 100%. No. This is why, like, I mean, I know, like, there's some disagreement about this, but I really, I, so much of this, I think, does not come back to the general marquee statement that the government wants you to get vaccinated. It comes to it goes to other things in my mind and that like why if they wanted the people to get vaccinated, why wouldn't they vaccinate migrants coming across the border? They could easily do it. They'd be very justified in mm -hmm. doing it. In fact, like I think a lot I think most Americans would support the idea that they force every single person coming across the border or a refugee coming in from Afghanistan to be vaccinated. Like, you know, if we're going to accept people in here, we don't want necessarily them to be spreading viruses around. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but like and you and you look at the way this was announced because you, you point out the vaccine mandate i think because first of all the rule isn't even out they have not even formalized this rule why on earth would you announce this before you actually had the text of the rule mm. i'm going to throw a crazy idea out here he announced it on september 9th a guy in the middle of a catastrophe in polling yep. with Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. He's got the September 11th anniversary two days away, and he comes out with this giant, crazy plan mm -hmm. with no, un no, he doesn't even have the legal theory worked out yet. <laughs> I, like, to me, it is a little misdirection. A little yeah. misdirection here. It was mm -hmm. gas, you wanted the yeah. perfect gaslighting because he knew, correct, and he was correct on this, that it would piss conservatives off so much that we would start talking about that instead of Afghanistan, and it would get 
his people who were actually pretty mad at him about Afghanistan to say, wait a minute, these damn conservatives are at it again. They're opposing this vaccine mandate. Yeah. So he was able to take a, you know, a, a 15 percent support issue like Afghanistan and turn it into a 50 percent one. And that's a win for his administration. He redirected mm -hmm. everybody away from the, the worst foreign policy catastrophe in my lifetime. And strategically, I'll give him a little credit on it. I mean, Are you going to give him credit? Do you really yeah, think it somebody was Joe his, Biden? Yeah. Is whoever's pulling his strings? I would say somebody in uh, in the in his uh, administration thought this one up, and it, and 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 here's why I really think it's true, and I really think that's the reason why it happened. It's not actually a vaccine mandate, and this is a, this is a thing that they could have presented it this way. It is a vaccine mandate unless you don't mind getting tested once a week. We were talking about this off the air. Yeah, and but you that's pay for what, it. Yes, right? and, yep. but, and no, that's what he did to, with the federal employees. And then all of a sudden he said, never mind, you, yes. can't, you don't have that option anymore. Right. So if you don't think this is a slow roll it is. You're, into... You're right. I do think it's coming eventually. But like he could have, it, let's just say in another world, a president that wants to unite the country and really wants to get people vaccinated, uh, or it just wants the virus to stop spreading, could have presented it this way. Here, and I think this is actually the legal structure they're going to attempt here, which is saying instead it's a testing mandate, but you get a, uh, you get an exemption if you're vaccinated. Yeah. So they're going to say, smart. and I think legally that will it will work better. They'll get a, a testing mandate through without a problem mm. in the courts, and then they'll just say, well, and if you're vaccinated, you don't have to do it. But they could have said this. Look, we understand there's people out there who really don't want to get vaccinated, and we really want this this virus to go away. We want to stop the spread of it. And if you don't want to get vaccinated, we really want you to. We really do. But if you're not going to do it, we just need to come up with a way to make sure we're not getting the, the disease spread. We have these 15 minute tests. We're going to provide them free to these mm -hmm. companies mm -hmm. and they're not invasive. We just need you to do that. And I understand that this is going to be a little bit of a problem, but we're just trying to take steps. Now, I would still oppose. I don't want any mandates. I don't like mandates, but that would be, I think a, there's a good chunk of people who don't want to get the vaccine who would say, all right, like if you're as long as you're not going to force me, I'll go do the test every week. It's not that big of a deal. He didn't. He presented it this way. We are tired of you. Mm -hmm. We have run out of patience mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. He antagonized the right. He wanted it to be elevated. He wanted the fight mm -hmm. because the fight distracted everybody from his complete catastrophe of a failure in Afghanistan and the thousands of permanent U.S. residents that are still there trying to survive. Mm. Uh, I mean, uh, it's it's the most cynical thing I can imagine out of a president. It's disgusting. Yeah. It, it is. Yeah. It's despicable how he's more pissed off at at law-abiding Americans yeah. than he is at the Taliban. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he doesn't, he saves all of his vile for us. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because you know who was against mandates for a really long time? Uh, Joe Biden, mm -hmm. Nancy Pelosi, Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. All of them said, there's no way we can do a, we just can't do a mandate. Yeah. It can't be done. That's not how things work here. Uh, it's unconstitutional. So what do they do? Do it they anyway. propose a mandate, mandate and they do it anyway. Right. Yeah. So I think, yes, it is in large part a distraction from Afghanistan. But I also think the control aspect is just something that they're a little bit hooked on right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the timing, I think, is Well, that's, is uh, that's why they have yeah. the CDC yep. issuing eviction moratoriums and yeah. stuff. It's like, Un unbelievable. What? The yeah. CDC Where doesn't have the authority to do from? that. They don't care. They're yeah. just like, they okay, we'll care. stop us. Well, it's, it's really an interesting part of this because he's done several of these things where he said himself, why we can't do this. We don't have the, the right, right to do this. Then and then he does, does it anyway. And, he does it. And, and like, he continually does it out of the what I would think is the wrong department. Like, if you were to say like eviction moratorium where are you going to go for that uh, hud probably yeah. right yeah. like yeah. housing uh, urban development yeah. yeah no he goes to the cdc <laughs> okay we're gonna do a vaccine mandate we're gonna go to uh cdc uh osha <laughs> like it, it's like all like he's and, and you could tell he's Weird. manipulating these rules right. to try to come up with a justification to get these things done i mean i i do hope he may be able to get a testing mandate through in the structure we just talked about i i do hope that this the courts would step up to block this he has He's on his best legal standing with the military, where they require all sorts of things. I mean, they require you to do the MMR vaccine in the military. Even if you had it as a kid, they make you get it again when you mm -hmm. join the military. There's all sorts mm -hmm. of requirements on the military. Even George Washington had vaccine mandates with the military. That is a probably where he has he's in his best standing. Outside of that, though, I mean, going mandating through OSHA a vaccine mandate or a pseudo vaccine mandate. I, I gotta believe the court sh shoots that down eventually, but 
part of this strategy is businesses are going to put it in anyway because mm -hmm. they know it, they think it's coming. Um, it gives businesses justifications. People who wanted to do it but were afraid to piss off their employees, they can go ahead with it. And by the time it gets overturned in the court, he'll probably you right. know have enough of this stuff done. I mean, right. it's, it's very cynical. Uh, by the way, I, I know we have to take a break, but really quickly, I do want to show this uh, tweet from Occupy Democrats that on this particular subject, they said a large Florida landlord announces that he will begin requiring all new and existing tenants to provide proof of COVID vaccination, saying you don't want to get vaccinated, you have to move. And if you don't, we will evict you. RT retweet if you support the landlord's move coming from the same people who just <laughs> said housing is a basic human right and by the way we need an eviction moratorium now wants to kick you out and have you have no place to live. Oh that's fantastic. You can't make this crap up if you try. God all right we've got more to come first we want to thank our sponsor, Startmail. So uh, I don't know if you guys realize this, but if you're using Gmail, Yahoo, all of these email services that say that they're free, they're not actually free. You're paying with your privacy. Uh, big tech, it, you, if you don't watch this program or Glenn Beck or Supergear or Pat Gray, you may not know this, but big tech actually really exploits your data by selling it to the highest bidder. Uh, they have all of your medical records, your business plan, all of the things that you've sent back and forth uh, in your emails, they have. Uh, don't even get me started on your searches. And whenever you're typing in, in Gmail, and you go to type in something and it finishes it oh, yeah. for you, <laughs> I was like, I, I want nothing to do with any of this. You gotta do what I did, use Startmail. Uh, Startmail keeps your email private. Every email can be encrypted, even if the recipient doesn't use encryption. Um, whenever I delete an email in Startmail, it is gone forever. And by the way, they use their own servers, not Amazon, so they cannot be put out of business without any notice. It's very seamless to switch over. You can easily transfer all your current email data, uh, so there is no starting from scratch. You also get unlimited anonymous aliases, so it prevents your main email address from spam and phishing attacks. You gotta go to Startmail, get an email today. Again, you can say that you think that you're with a free email service, but when you're paying with your privacy and your data, that's worth a lot, all right? Switch to Startmail, start securing your email privacy with Startmail, sign up today and you'll get 50% off of your first year at startmail.com slash Y. That is startmail, S-T-A-R-T, mail.com slash Y. All right, I don't wanna to spend too much time um, on this particular part, but I did tease it in the beginning of the show, so I feel like I need to mention that LA County uh, is putting forward a new health order this week mandating proof of vaccination or a negative COVID-19 test for several situations and events, indoor bars, wineries, breweries, nightclubs, lounges, uh, and outdoor mega events, including Dodgers, Rams, and Chargers games. And uh, the order will also mandate that customers and workers at indoor nightlife businesses have received at least one dose of the vaccine by October 7th and their second shot by November 4th. Uh, you might recognize some of those venues as outdoor outdoors. as well. Outdoors, Which yes. is ludicrous. Yes. Completely bonkers. It, yes. It's so ridiculous. Uh, and it's one of these things. It Cal you said it was California, right? Yeah. Um, one of the interesting uh, parts of uh, the Newsom recall effort, which I supported, I wanted him recalled, and and I I like that yeah. they went for it. And yeah. honestly, three weeks ago they had a real chance, and it didn't wind up working out. As as I think a couple events sort of moved those polls against uh, Larry Elder. I think um, one of the events though was that they were running against Trump. That seemed to help yeah. them. Oh yeah. It, it, mm -hmm. Despite the fact that Trump wasn't on the ballot, right. they claimed he was. Well, he's the black Trump. Yeah. <laughs> that's basically what they black face yeah. of white supremacy as we yes, know of course um yeah and i think that's true like they, mm -hmm. they made him out to be basically donald trump i think too you know this is a separate you know longer point but like i think too like the uh, the texas abortion law happening when it did i think got democrats mm -hmm. fired hyper up. fired up and you know look i it's hard to lose an election in California for Democrats. So, I mean, I, you know, I think the, I still support the effort. The pro, the, the, on the other side of this, to, to, when you fail, right? It's like, you know, people were saying this about Trump. Like, you, know, you try to impeach him, you fail. Mm -hmm. He's going to be emboldened. Mm -hmm. um, I think people are trying to spin this into essentially an endorsement of all these crazy measures. You know, all the, the vaccine mandates and the, and the passports and the, and the masking of kids in school. You know, that's what some, got things going in the first place. Yeah, yeah that's what got people us. People aren't in favor yeah. of that, yeah. but even in California. It wound up, yep. you know, they wound up bringing but, back the guy who did yeah. it. And yeah. so yeah. now I think he's emboldened to try to do more of these things. Yep. And that's 
So I, I wouldn't want to be live in California right now, I'll tell you that. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, all right, so President Biden is standing by General Mark Milley, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, after these reports that Milley coordinated with the Chinese and his own staff against, of course, uh, former President Trump. Now, this comes from a new book that is out by the, uh, I'm sorry, it's coming out. It's not out Next yet. Week, I think. Yes, by the Washington Post, uh, uh, Bob Woodward and Robert Costa. And so according to this book that they wrote, they said that Milley made two phone calls with his counterpart in China on October 30th and January 8th and that he reportedly assured the general of the People's Liberation Army that Milley would warn him if Trump ordered a military strike against China. Mm. Uh, he said, if we're going to attack, this, allegedly, if we're going to attack, I'm going to call you ahead of time. It's not going to be a surprise. Uh, but despite all of that, Joe Biden says he has great confidence in General Milley. Watch. Thank you all for being here, and thank you. Thank you, General Milley. Thank you, General Milley. Thank you. I have great confidence in General Milley. Thank you, Thank you. I mean, that's uh, probably because he was just doing what you would have wanted yeah. him to do. Uh, uh, <laughs> look at him. He's half I mean, dead. Just look at the guy. He's half dead. Yeah, he needs to prove that he's legally alive. <laughs> he needs to prove it. To we all have to get the these office. COVID tests. You should just prove you're alive, <laughs> yeah. Joe. Oh, I think I, that that's fair. a new heartbeat law. I yeah. want to make sure he's yeah, got yeah. one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's what one beat per three minutes, I'm, I'm afraid, at this I'm point. I'm a little more concerned, though, about the brain function. Let's mm. see if yeah. the brain's moving at all, because I don't think it is. Yeah. yeah. I well, don't think it especially is. Especially after these remarks. I yeah. Think. Oh, look, wow. you should not have confidence in Mark Milley. You know, I, I like, you know, look, he didn't actually, we didn't actually attack. He didn't actually call and warn him, but he should not be going around doing that. There's other parts of that story that look really bad for him as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, you have to have someone you can depend on to execute the elected officials plan. Uh, and if you have someone who's not doing that, mm -hmm. you need him out. You need him out of that role. Even if you think he was right, you think Trump's crazy and he was doing crazy things, you still need him out of that role. Well, and it's just like, it's so frustrating as a conservative to hear the left uh, taunt you with the idea that the deep state is some conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. And you and hear brag, stuff like yeah. this. Yeah, you hear stuff like yeah. this and you're like, that's what it is. That's exactly what we've been talking about this whole time. Let's, can we call it something else? Can we come up with a new term for it that isn't mm -hmm. deep state? Because they act like that's a conspiracy theory, and then they admit to it later. Yeah, I mean, this information seems to have to come from Millie or close allies to Millie. Like, I mean, but he denies seen, it now. He kind of right. denies. Uh, yes, yes. He denies the way they framed it. He he's said, not denying it's happened. I mean, he's just saying like, no, I just had a normal conversation. Other people were on the call. It was not a surprise. Mm. I wasn't doing anything bad. Right. But the calls happened. Yeah. And the only way people would really know the calls happened is someone who was on the call. Because he, part of the story is True. he didn't tell anybody. Right, yeah. right. So, I mean, it does seem like it came from him or one of his allies. People who like him are complaining that he went uh, on deep background with way too many authors. So it does seem like it came from him. And the reason it came from him is because he was bragging about it. He was saying, like, I stood up, again, in yep. his view, yep. I stood up for America against this crazy, tyrannical president that may have thrown us into a nuclear war. You should give me credit for that. He wants that's that out there in history. Right. I, that's exactly <laughs> what. That's what it's, but it's like, it, it doesn't count as deep state if you really don't like that president. Like, oh. that's kind of like what they, that, that really does seem to be. And it's, not, and it's not treasonous if you really don't like the president. Yeah, exactly. Right. If you really if think you, he's if bad. If you right. really think you're really good. If he's really a buffoon, right. you, yeah. can, you can commit treason all you want. But yeah. like, watch the way he just answered that question and tell me you don't th think that there's a general out there that thinks he's senile and doesn't want to sure. listen to his orders. And, yeah. and, and that shouldn't be the case. Yeah. I, so I, I want to, Pat, I want to get your take on that, but I do also want to throw in, because you mentioned Joe Biden's brain function. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do want to throw in uh, Joe Biden appearing to forget the name of the Australian Prime Minister, oh, yeah, this is good. Um, who, by, by the way, his name is Scott Morrison, so mm -hmm. I don't think that's like, particularly hard <laughs> no, it's to not. pronounce, it, remember. It's not. But uh, here is uh, Joe Biden, like, hey, that, that fella there down under, watch. Thank you, over to you, Mr. President. Thank you, Boris, and, and I wanna thank uh, that fella down under. Thank you very much. He has no God. idea. Appreciate it, Mr. I Prime promise Minister. you, he has no idea. <laughs> he doesn't have a clue what the guy's the name poor is. Guy. Hey, the guy <laughs> on that monitor there down under. And I know that because there was a song 
like that <laughs> with the land down under. That's right. Remember that? I Back do. when I was in my 60s, <laughs> in the 80s. Gosh, that's <laughs> almost right. Yeah, yeah I you're know. exaggerating. That's almost right. It's it, almost it, in the 60s. It's very record. close. Uh, it's unbelievable. And you know that they prepare him for that because they know how bad he is. And you know his aides are telling him, Mr. President, you're going to be talking to Boris Johnson from the UK and Scott Morrison from Australia. So for people who, and I know there's people, I, I mentioned this this morning, I'll bet you there's people who think, I don't know the Prime Minister of Australia either. Yeah. He's the leader of the free world and he's talking to both of them. Both right. these guys, uh, one of whom is the Australian PM. Right. You got to know his name and he has no idea yeah he has like, no idea and i saw in the article well he mentioned it later so he knew yeah it was in the teleprompter later <laughs> yeah or it was on a piece of paper in front of him yeah right, right. I, I, you know again like if you yeah. i think this is a real brain fun function here yeah. because it, yes, if you don't start the sentence the way he started it unless you know the name right so you start mm -hmm. the name like, yes. and also thank yes. you to and that's when he loses it yep you know, he, it's yeah. like, uh, you know, he's pressing on the gas and the car's not going. Yep. And that's a real problem. Yeah. You think? President of the yeah. United States. And that's where he usually goes, well. I feel like that's very picky of you. Mm, well, uh, I've, I've said enough. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, my, a, my, like in the debates, new my mechanism. time's up. Yeah. Oh, I said my I've time's talked, up. Also. I've talked too long. <laughs> I'll stop. No, sir, you have plenty of time. Plenty no, of time. Keep no, going. No, no. Keep going. Uh, all right, we've got more to come, but we need to uh, take a break. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Chamonix. So um, I don't, I, you can't tell because I use Chamonix, but I haven't slept in 11 months. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. this stuff does work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but so you would think that my under my eyes would be like really baggy and puffy. But it's not because I use their product for uh, uh, eye bags and puffiness because I don't sleep. Because, again, we were mentioning uh, at the beginning of the program that thing like, why do people have children? Yes, I remember that. <laughs> so I don't actually sleep, haven't slept in 11 months. But you wouldn't know it because of Geniacel and Chamonix. So they have this serum with plant stem cell technology. And uh, it, I love it. I've heard from a lot of viewers that love it as well. Like Susan from New Jersey, she said, I've been using Genucel for a couple months. The puffiness around my eyes is gone. The crow's feet and small lines have disappeared. They haven't come back. I love your product. I use it around my eyes, around my cheekbones, and on my eyelids. Um, I've reached the age where I, I just, I have to have a little bit of extra help. Anti-wrinkle cream, all right, I, yeah, I'll admit it, okay. But these <laughs> products have worked for me amazingly. They've got instant effects. You'll see the results in the first 12 hours or your money back, they guarantee it. Order now and get 50% off all Genucel packages. You gotta go to lovegenucel.com slash Y. If you are a tired mom, I'm telling you, you gotta go to lovegenucel, that's G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash Y. Mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, has a new plan to fight crime in <laughs> Chicago, which, by the way, I don't know if you've noticed, but is, like, very, very high. Is it to personally scare the criminals with her face? <laughs> <laughs> How yes. dare you? Okay. Yes. How dare How did you, you know? No, I, don't. I don't even have anything else to say now. You called it. No. Uh, you, yes. But also to, uh, to sue the, uh, the street gangs that are committing the, mm. the violence. Now, I, I would like to remind you guys, just for uh, perspective here, she is requiring cops to get permission uh, to, from their superior to chase suspects on foot. Um, and, you know, I mean, this, like, the crime is just rampant in there, hasn't really done anything to curb it, but she did say that the city will file lawsuits against street gangs and take their money and assets. She said, <laughs> we, will, we will hold you accountable. Uh, and that she would, the, her measure would allow judges to quote, order the forfeiture or money or property that is directly or indirectly related to street gang activity. We are going after their blood money, the money they have profited off killing. So mm. it's all, mm. all good news. Good news mm -hmm. abounds, especially in Chicago with uh, Lori Lightfoot. Yeah. It's incredible. It really is. And I think uh, uh, it's not focused on enough how this is just affecting like poorer neighborhoods you know i was in chicago a month or two ago uh and i was in i'm sorry mainly the, i know well that because that's kind of what i thought going there right <laughs> i was mainly in the tourist areas right okay. i'm down on the you know by the you know the, the I mean, it's a the great main city. drive yeah. it's a great city if you're i was not at, shot while you're there right <laughs> it's really nice but I, but <laughs> you i went to return home to your family <laughs> yeah it's great yeah. i went to the main city areas right i yeah. you know walked around a lot there i went to wrigley you know we did a lot of the things you do in chicago if you like you know you're showing up for a weekend right and i'll say you know 
there was no point where it seemed like an out of control, terrible city. Mm -hmm. Those people who make lots of money, who work in the city, who go to all the nice areas, they're not having these problems. Because mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I remember when I came back, I was like, you know, I, I kind of thought that was going to be a little bit more chaotic. You know, yeah. like that, I, there, there'd be like, it, you'd have that feeling of Is danger. Is that why you went? Um, yeah, I wanted to see, you know, if I could get shot. Um, <laughs> but, and I thought maybe, well, maybe this is, one of those weekends where that didn't happen. And I came back and I turned on like, you know, Fox News and like 68 people were yeah. shot like Jeez. yesterday. And it was like, that mm -hmm. stuff's all happening. It's happening in areas where politicians aren't. You know, it's easy to say they shouldn't, uh, you know, oh, we gotta ban all the guns when you, when the people who would need them to protect themselves are not, not the high level, highfalutin people in your society. They're not the business leaders. Those people are, are on these main roads where everything's pretty nice, mm -hmm. frankly. Um, and that's kind of, it makes it worse, it feels like. It's, yeah. it, it really is contained in these areas, and they don't seem to be all that concerned about it. I mean, to, to, to restrict police officers and talk about suing gangs, I mean, are we even, are we even trying to take this seriously? <laughs> no, well, the answer would be not no. Not at all. No. I mean, more people, more kids have been shot, I think it's up to 18 years old, have been shot dead than have died from COVID nationwide. Mm. More more kids have been shot in Chicago than have died mm. of COVID nationwide. That's and partially because oh. not a lot of people have died from COVID that are young. Right. Okay, right. Hold, but on, hold, still, on, hold on. But still, it's, it's amazing. staggering because COVID sure is the worst this. thing of all time. I want to make sure I understand this. Mm -hmm. More children just in Chicago. And just in Chicago have been shot than have died from COVID nationwide. nationwide. Incredible. Holy crap. Incredible. Incredible. And yeah. sad. You know, I mean, that's it's really sad. It's oh really sad. Gosh. And you should hear that stat, right? Yeah, yeah. I that mean, should be something I had that you no know. idea. Yeah, it's a great stat. It's, wow. It, or but that's stat. how much they don't care. Yeah. They pretend to. Black Lives Matter, for instance, will tell you that they care about black lives. Really? Do they? Mm. Why aren't you ever talking about that? Right, and I mean, that kind of ties in with the vaccine mandates, too, because uh, blacks are one of the populations that right. they are right. not very vaccinated, and these organizations don't seem to care and that they're that matter, getting a, good point. vaccine mandates Abortion is another well. huge issue for blacks. Yeah. You know, when more babies are aborted than born alive in New York, I mean, why aren't those issues, be, if you really do care about black lives, you must address those things. Are you saying you want black babies to be yes, born? Yes, I, I am. Really? <laughs> oh, wow, I what a hateful position. As, <laughs> as a conservative, that's your position. Yeah. So what that's you're saying is position. you don't want black women to have access to abortion and health care. To re reproductive um, health care. Thank you. It, it, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. All right, we got to take a break. We'll be back. It's just like, and you know, Chicago is just one example of those. Like there are city after city after city, the same stories. So I was going to give Pat the opportunity to uh, talk about BYU football at the end of the show, but now Stu wants to talk about the Eagles, and I feel like this is a horrible decision. Yeah, that's that's a bad decision to talk about the Eagles. <laughs> you talking about uh, America's team, the Eagles? Uh, <laughs> yes, no. I agree. I am like, look, you know, they're no. they're, they're uh -huh. first place, obviously. That's, uh -huh. that's great. And uh, tell me more about sad BYU football. Mm -hmm. Big Twelve. They're going to the Big Twelve. Uh, it's finally happened. They're You're finally going to a conference, a conference, <laughs> and a Power Five conference. That's great. And they beat their rival, the godless animals of the University of Utah. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really, really good weekend last weekend. Congrats. Good time to be a BYU fan. Are they, uh, they're still undefeated? Still undefeated. Yeah. Yeah, got Arizona State coming up this week. That's a big one. It's a big one. Another big one. Still undefeated. How many college games have, have there been? Two. I've been totally out. Okay, I was like. <laughs> Two. I Still undefeated. Yeah. I feel like there's only been a couple. Well, I think with BYU and is they they tend to front load those difficult games because yeah, the do. other teams and these other conferences have to play conference games later on. So it seems oh, like yeah, they always yeah. have a couple of really tough games at the beginning of the year. Um, Which means for the other teams, they're like, cool, we get the easy ones at the beginning. Yeah, yes. Yes. That's basically yes. <laughs> exactly that's right. basically what. That's happens. like when I was uh, when I was in school and I had season tickets to all of the Texas football games. Their first uh, game was always like Rice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they win like four. 48 to 2. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It was not as fun as you would think being in the stands. You're like, all right, another touchdown 10 seconds later. Great. <laughs> awesome. So glad we're here. Uh, all right, don't forget to catch both of these gentlemen's programs, Stu Does America and also Pat Gray Unleashed. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.